All righty. Hello and welcome back. For those of you who are just joining us now, I hope you had a wonderful holiday. We were just chatting. Um, I can't believe it's the fourth already. It feels like this year is like, it's going to fly as it usually does. It seems like the older we get. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Misty Cordes and I am the founder of Your Marketing Coach. And we also have Colin on the line with us again today, and he's going to be monitoring the chat and the Q&A. So if you have any questions as I'm presenting, feel free to send them to us, and we'll be sure to answer them as it makes sense. So Colin, jump in, interrupt me. You know me. I go a million miles an hour. So <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, you, it, it's like stopping a freight train at that point. <laughs> But for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, first of all, welcome to our Extraordinary Entrepreneur Community. Um, my goal is to show up live each week and provide valuable information and training that will help you in your business. Now, I have to do a little disclaimer here, right? I can't guarantee results. Uh, every business is different in the products you offer, the clients you serve, your experience, and so much more all affect your specific results. That said, our business and some of our clients have seen results from the strategies that I'm going to be sharing with you. And that leads me to today's topic. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off my video so that way you guys can focus on the slides that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So the reality is, is that most entrepreneurs wing it, right? They hope that they'll be able to pay their bills and have some profit at the end of the year. They rarely set goals. If they have goals, they don't have an executable plan to achieve them and they don't track their progress diligently. They fill in their schedules with busy work that keeps them overwhelmed. They constantly chase fires in their business and they let their email inbox dictate their day. Now, <laughs> you might've seen that message, right? And I don't know if you can relate to this, but I wrote that with me in mind. I was like that for years, so I know it to be true. Not to mention, we've worked with thousands of entrepreneurs over the last 10 years, and we've seen it time and time again. So. You know, if you're sick and tired of running your business on hope, overwhelm, and busy work, then you're in the right place, my friend, because today we are going to be talking about how to plan your success. And it's perfect timing. It's the beginning of the year. We're all coming back from the holiday. So it's the perfect time to set your year off right. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. You know, this is 30 minutes. Get in, get out, get a bunch of value and information. So we're going to start off with step number one. And step number one is you need to make sure that when it comes to planning your success, that you audit your marketing efforts. Um, one question that I get all the time is, hey, Misty, you know, I'm in such and such industry. What do I need to do to grow my business? And that's a great question. <laughs> and my response is always the same. It's, I don't know yet. Because see, first, we have to do a marketing audit. If you think about it, like, let me give you an example. If you were heading to my house for the very first time, and you called me up and you said, hey, Misty, I think I'm lost. Can, can you guide me in? You know, can you guide me to your house? Give me directions. The first thing that I would ask you is, where are you at? Well, you see, I can't guide you if I don't know where you're at. So that's what the marketing audit is all about. So that leads me to this. And it's life cycle marketing. I talk about this all the time. Life cycle marketing is a mix of strategies a company uses to communicate and move its target audience from being a prospect to becoming a customer, then an ambassador, and eventually a lifelong customer. Now, there's seven stages in the life cycle marketing process, and I'm going to walk you through each one of these. Um, but just kind of give you a high overview, the, the first stage in life cycle marketing is where you create a uh, awareness. This is where essentially you're advertising your business, right? The second stage is where you're capturing leads. This is where you're being intentional about um, usually giving something away for free in exchange for a person's contact information so that you can add them to your email marketing list. The third stage in life cycle marketing is nurture. Now you've got the leads, right, on your email marketing list, and now you want to nurture that relationship. One of the biggest mistakes I see entrepreneurs and uh, businesses in general make is they want to take a prospect or a lead from being um, from the awareness all the way to the convert stage without actually nurturing them, right? And it, it, this is where they go wrong because most people are not going to be ready to buy from you right away. So that nurturing is a critical component. Next is convert. 
And in the convert stage, that's where you have things in place like your sales pipeline, your communications, um, your follow-ups, maybe you're making up on calls. So you're looking for opportunities on ways that you can convert, of course, your leads into customers. The next stage is delight. So this is where you're intentional about giving your new customer a delightful experience in working with you, your team, your products and services, right? So I often talk about um, most businesses think that they're delighting when they're actually delivering. So there's a difference, right? Delivering is giving your new customer exactly what they expected and delighting is being intentional about giving them an experience a, um, maybe, maybe you have special um, things that you do for customers that are kind of behind the scenes. It's not something that you promote, but it's something that happens in, in your onboarding process. So delighting customers is a key component to the next stage, which is creating ambassadors. And as an ambassador, this is what we all want as small business owners. We want people who can't help but to tell other people about us, right? And that's how we get referrals. That's how we grow through word of mouth. And, um, and we want to be intentional about helping our happy, satisfied, delighted customers. We wanna be intentional about ha having them spread the word. So there's th some things that we can do there. And then the last stage of lifecycle marketing, of course, is upsell. This can also be, it could be upselling, it could be retaining. Um, essentially what you do is you ask yourself, how else can I continue to, con to support my customers, right? That may be offering them additional products and services, or it may just be how, you know, continuing to provide a delightful experience so that they continue on their relationship with you as a customer. So those are the seven stages of the lifecycle marketing process. I say this all the time, but whenever we work with clients, what we do is we look to the lifecycle marketing process and we say, okay, where is the breakdown in your system? So when I talk about auditing your business, what I'm, what I'm suggesting that you do is that you ask yourself, what am I doing now in each stage of the life cycle marketing process? You see, as you go through this, this, this step in, in auditing your business, you're going to begin to identify the areas that you need to focus on. So let me kind of give you an example of this. In the awareness category, this is where you're advertising your business. Ask yourself right now, grab a pen and paper if you have one handy, and just ask yourself, what am I doing now to advertise my business? And I'll give you a couple of examples of what you might be doing. So you might be networking face-to-face. -face. That's a way that you're advertising or promoting your business. Um, maybe you're doing Google ads, PPC ads. That's another way that you're advertising your business. Maybe you've bought a radio spot on radio or a billboard, right? So what you wanna do here is you wanna list all of the things that you're doing to advertise your business. And when you're done, just as an example in this particular stage of the life cycle marketing process, if you're looking at that stage going, you know what? I'm really not doing a lot there. That's how you know you've identified a problem in your process, right? Because each one of these stages requires some form of activity so that you can move your prospects from learning about your company to capturing them, to nurturing them, and, and so on down the pipeline. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, drop it in chat or Q&A. So ask yourself though, if you can, just take a quick snapshot of this. What are you doing now in each stage of the lifecycle marketing process? And identify the areas that you need to focus on. All right, I'm gonna keep moving on. We got so much more to cover today. Now, before I dive into the next steps, I wanna just do a brief introduction and kind of give you a visual of the, the plan your success planning process. So these are the steps that you're going to follow to create a plan that you and your team, if you have one, that you can implement with clarity and focus. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through each of these steps together. So step number two in the planning process is where you're gonna identify what I call the boulders that you wanna move in your business in the next 12 months. Boulders are the annual priorities that you want to accomplish. These are the things that will actually move the needle in your business, move you towards your goals. So let me give you an example of this. 
Um, a, a couple of boulders that you might have, obviously one boulder you should set or priority, whichever way you wanna name it, <laughs> is that you should set a gross revenue goal, right? How much revenue do you wanna produce this year? You might also want to add to your list a, you know, products or that you want to develop or new services that you want to create uh, to offer your customers. And um, you may also want to increase client retention. Uh, that might also be something that's important, a boulder that you want to move in your business. These are all just examples of boulders or annual priorities. And if you notice, they're kind of like the, the 10,000 foot view of the things that you want to accomplish that will actually move the needle in your business. <laughs> so I am noticing <laughs> my pictures say Canva on it. I have absolutely no idea why, <laughs> but anyways, ignore that. <laughs> you can tell I created my presentation in Canva and I don't know why it's doing that. It's weird. Anyways, we're going to move on. Okay, so these are the 10,000 foot view. These are the boulders. Step three, the next step is where you're going to turn your boulders into SMART goals. So SMART goals are, the acronym stands for this, specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and time-specific goals that you want to achieve and that are in alignment with your boulders, okay? So let me give you an example of this one as well. So let me walk you through the process here. This is really, really important um, because what I often find is that entrepreneurs confuse tasks with goals or goals with boulders, right? So tasks are the things that we, we need to do in our business, but the tasks don't necessarily get us closer to our goals, right? So the, the process that I'm sharing with you here helps you identify the things that are actually going to move the needle. That's the boulders. The SMART goals is how you take that, that boulder and you break it down into a, a actual goal that you can accomplish. And then the tasks are the work that need to be done in order to achieve that. I have so many people who hear that and they go, wow. That is life changing for me. That is business changing for me because so many people think that tasks are goals and they confuse that. And then they wonder why they stay busy all year and never move the needle. So let's walk through this. At the very tippy top, you can see the annual priorities. These are your boulders. So um, what do you wanna, you know, what are those boulders? Step two is specific, right? What do you want to accomplish specifically? And I'm gonna actually give you a live example of this in a moment measurable. That's where you ask yourself, what do you need to track in order to know if your goal has been achieved? Actionable. Do you or your team have the ability to implement it? Or do you need to hire someone who does? Relevant is where you ask yourself, is this in alignment with the boulder that I'm trying to move? And then time specific, which is obviously when do you want to accomplish this goal? So let me give you a very specific example. So here I'm talking about generating $250,000 in gross revenue. So most of us, if not all of us, right, will have set a gross revenue goal. You should set one if you haven't, okay? So I wanna generate $250,000 this year. So to get it specific, how are you going to generate that? That's what you need to ask yourself. And um, in this example here, I'm, I'm saying, I wanna sell 50 customers our ABC product. It doesn't matter what the product is, it could be a service, or it could be a combination, right? If you have more than one product or service, you wanna be very specific on how many units or how many customers you want to acquire to reach the revenue goal that you're trying to achieve. You might be thinking, Misty, <laughs> like this is common sense. And you would be shocked at the number of people that we meet with as a team um, that we've spoke to, we ask them, what's your goals for the next 12 months? Number one, they very rarely ever have it set. And number two, it, even if they have a revenue goal, which some do, uh, we'll ask them, okay, what do you need to do to achieve that? And that's where we lose them again. They, they very rarely can, can identify exactly what they need to do in order to reach their goal. And you have to understand, like, your brain needs that path to understand what needs to be done so that 
our habits and our actions and the activity that we take place in our business will fall in alignment with that. So here, I specifically know that if I sell 50 customers of my ABC product, I'm going to reach my $250,000 goal. Okay, next, measurable. So this is where you ask yourself, how do I know if I've reached my goal? What are the things I need to be tracking in my business? So one of the things you need to track, of course, is leads, because without leads, you can't make sales. Another thing you might need to track is discovery calls, if that's what your sales process is. Um, you know, it depends on the business, obviously, but this is an example. I also need to track my closing ratios, because if I don't track those things, I'm not going to know where my system is breaking down and why we're not converting. And then, of course, you want to track your sales. If I would have asked you prior to this call, if you were honest with yourself and I said, OK, what do you need to do to measure how you, if you're going to achieve your goal? Most people probably would have said, well, I need to measure my sales, which is obvious, right? I need to know, if, <laughs> am, I, am I on track? But all the other components are equally as important because without leads, you can't make sales. If, you're if your process, sales process includes discovery calls, if you don't have those, obviously you can't generate sales either. So you wanna make sure that you're asking yourself, what are all, what's all the data I need to be monitoring in order to measure and track if I'm on track to reach my goal. Next, actionable. <clears throat> so this is where you're asking yourself, do, do I or my team have the ability to implement these things, right? And if you don't, then you need to ask yourself, who do I need to hire to help me? So in this case, maybe you need to hire a salesperson. Maybe, you know, you've got too much on your plate and you're really not consistent with, do, you know, capturing leads and doing discovery calls. And you've just identified, you know what, in order to achieve this this year, we need to get us a, a full-time salesperson on our team, all right? And then relevant. This is where you're asking yourself, is my goal in alignment with my boulder? right? So the goal, the specific goal is to sell 50 customers. Is that in alignment with my boulder of generating 250,000 in revenue? And the answer is simply yes. And then time specific. When do you want to achieve this by? And of course, we're going to give ourselves to the end of the year. All right. We're going to keep on moving on. And we're going to move to step number four. Now that you have identified your SMART goals, it's time to identify the strategies that you will implement to achieve your SMART goals. This is another mistake I see entrepreneurs make all the time, is that they chase strategies without having clarified what they want to accomplish first. And if you do this, here's what's going to happen. You're going to end up killing yourself, working your tail off all year long. And yet at the end of the year, you look back and you say, man, I'm exhausted by all the work I put into my business this last year, but I didn't get any closer to my goal. Now, if you do, that's great. If it just happened to happen by chance, right? That pure working yourself, you know, to the bone, it, it got you in alignment. But for most people, what ends up happening is they just fill their schedules with a bunch of busy work. So when you're identifying strategies, let me kind of give you an idea of how we develop strategies that can help our clients reach their goals. So the first thing that we do, of course, is we get clear on what they want. And so we know that they want to generate $250,000 in gross revenue. We also know that they have to sell 50 customers, their ABC product or service, and they want to do it by December 31st. That's the high level of that SMART goal, right? So the very next thing that we would do with our customers is we would start to brain dump the strategies that will help them reach their goal. Now, the thing I wanna point out here is this, there is probably always going to be more than one way that you can sell your products or services, right? So how you effectively sell will be dependent upon your audience, your relationship with them, what you're selling, and how you actually wanna build your business. So. What I've listed here on the right-hand side of the slide are just a few examples of the sales funnels that we've implemented for not only in our own business, but also for our clients. So if I was coaching you and you said, hey, Misty, this is my SMART goal. This is what I want to accomplish this, this year. What should I do? I would come up with some of these. I would come up with these 
options, right? Now, this isn't an all-inclusive list. Obviously, this is just kind of like a taste of what we might come up with. So I might come up with, and I say, okay, so there's one thing that we can do is I can teach you my million-dollar discovery sales process. So I have a very concise um, discovery call process that uh, when um, we follow this process in our own business, like if I get you on a discovery call, I'm going to close 80 plus percent of the time. So it's a, that's why I call it the million dollar discovery call process because it converts, it works, right? And I have a very specific methodology. So I would explain to my client at a high level what that million dollar discovery call process is. And then we would determine, is that the way that you want to sell your product or service? And they say, well, I'm not really sure. What else you got? I say, okay, well, another thing that we could do is we could do what we call launch it. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Jeff Walker, but you should certainly look him up. He has a great book. Um, <laughs> fun fact, early on in my business, I started my business. I read his book. I got super excited about his philosophy of selling and the, his style of selling through a funnel. And um, I, I was working with a client at the time. I thought, man, this is a perfect fit for them. So I went to him and I said, hey, I just read this book and I think it could work for you, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so he go, I said, if you're willing to try it, I'll discount my services and I'll implement this for you. And so he said, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Let's see how it goes. So we had a $97 product. We put together this funnel, Jeff Walker style through the book, just the education that I learned through this book. And uh, in five days, we gener generated $26,000 in sales. It was crazy. So this funnel, it works, right? So that methodology might be the way that I approach selling this product or service for this customer. Um, the next way that you can sell your services is through what we call webinars that convert sales funnels. So you've probably seen this before. You get on someone's webinar, they, they provide some value, and then they move into a solution and they provide you an opportunity to make an investment with them. That's the webinar funnel, right? And we have specific ways that we approach that as well. Another thing that you might uh, want to implement in your business is a group method sales funnel, where you actually, you guys are part of that. If you're part of the Extraordinary Entrepreneur group, our Facebook group, our, I'm going to be completely transparent, kind of pull back the curtain of our business. Here's what our intention is. Our intention is to show up every week, do a live webinar um, or a live call and deliver tremendous value to you as, as much as we can in 30 minutes. And our hope is that you're actually going to do what we suggest. And eventually one day, you're not going to be able to do it all yourself and you will hire our team to help you. That is our group method sales funnel. Now there's more intricacies in there, but that's essentially what it is. Provide high level value and nurture our group. And eventually when they start doing it and having success, they're going to hire our team to be their full-time marketing agency. All right, next funnel is the quiz funnel. If you've seen quizzes online, taken a quiz and went through that process, you, you know what that is. We also implement those. And then we have the Ascension model sales funnel, which is a, just another way to sell um, products and services. So as you can see, there are a lot of different ways that you can sell. So what you need to do is you don't deploy all of them. You pick one and you fully deploy it. That is the strategy. What most business, businesses and entrepreneurs do is they hear about Jeff Walker and then they try to implement that and they hear about the quiz funnel and they try to do that and you get the point, right? They're jumping all, all around the place. They're chasing strategies and they're wondering why nothing is working. And the reason is, is because they're not fully deploying it to its fullest because they're taking on too much. They're trying to deploy too many strategies and they're not optimizing it as they go. Does this resonate with anyone? Am I the only one that's ever done this? <laughs> so anyways, okay, so step, whatever step we're on, what are we on? Step number four is to identify the strategies. Okay, step number five, once you've identified your strategy that you want to implement, then you need to create what we call a map, a marketing action plan. So let's walk through that really quickly. So this is kind of a snapshot of what our marketing action plan looks like. It's a simple document. And, and essentially what it is, is it's a framework that is used to identify everything that is needed to design, develop, create, and launch your strategy. So in the planning framework, what you're going to identify are the assets that you're going to need the content that you're going to need to create, 
the tools that you need to leverage and the skills that are needed to complete the project. So we use this exact process to scope and plan projects for clients. So in the previous step, I said, we identify the strategy and what we'll do is we'll map that strategy out, right? And I like, like hand drawing it, that's kind of my thing. Hand drawing the strategy, what are the moving parts to all that strategy? Now we have a blueprint, if you will, for what we want to um, implement. And then as we look at that blueprint, so imagine you're building a house, right? The, the, the um, designer comes in and says, here's the blueprint for your house. And then of course, now what do we need to do? Well, now we need to pick out the tile. Now we need to pick out the faucets. Now we need to pick out the paint. Now we, you get the point? That's what we're talking about in the, max, in the marketing action plan. It's the, it's the lumber, it's the materials, it's the things that you need in order to build the strategy or the blueprint. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> okay, moving on. Step number six is that you need to schedule your work. Now, again, this should be common sense, but this is where you set time aside to work on your business. This is where the planning has ended. You're crystal clear on exactly what needs to be implemented. And now you and your team need to do the work to implement the strategies. Now, I'm gonna move into this because before I take a few questions and kind of end today, didn't that go fast? <laughs> it always does. Um, but before I take a few questions, I want to provide you with some, I'm going to call in it the million dollar mentoring. And this is just advice that I have for you that I've seen time and time again. I, and, and a lot of this, to be quite honest, I've experienced myself. So I know firsthand how, how we get into these situations, right? So the first thing I would say is don't be a drifter. A drifter is someone who moves about their business, their year, their month, their week, and their day aimlessly. A drifter has, is, over, is always overwhelmed with a ton of busy work. And busy work is the stuff that keeps you busy, but it has very little value in actually moving the big boulders in your business. Okay? So that's a drifter. Don't be a drifter. Prior, number two, prioritize your growth. How do you do that? Schedule time to work on your business to get things done. So for those of you who have a full-time job and you're kind of starting your side gig, right? Because we have a lot of startups in here. Here's what I would say to you. Schedule time to work on your side hustle. That's how you get things done. If you wanna, if you wanna leave your job, if you wanna you know, go full force into your business, and um, then you need to schedule time that you work on your business. If you do not prioritize that, that will never happen for you. Because if you do not do the work that needs to be done so that you can take that step forward, it won't happen, right? And, and then for those of you who run a business, right? So you're running your business full time and you're, you're pulled in a million different directions. What do you need to do, right? You need to schedule time to work on your business. <laughs> See, here's the thing that you need to understand. I, I, I spoke to someone um, earlier this week and, and they said to me, well, uh, you know, I, I said, well, you know, when are you going to get these things done? And they said, well, I'm going back to work. So it's going to be a lot harder. And I went in, in my coaching mind, my mind goes, uh, that's not actually true. That's a lie. We're telling ourselves because see the equilibrium of life is time. We all have the same 24 hours. Now, some people spend their time and some people invest their time. And when I'm talking about spending their time, I'm saying, hey, if, if you're working a full-time job and you're trying to get this side hustle going so that you can leave your full-time job and be full-time in your business, then you need to stop spending time on the things that aren't serving you and your business and your growth, meaning stop watching TV, right? Stop spending time on things that aren't, aren't helping you and start investing your time. So instead of watching TV in the evenings or on the weekends, invest some time in your business and, and doing the things that you need to do. And then for those of us, if, if you're thinking, well, I have a disadvantage because I have a full-time job and I'm doing this on the side, that's actually couldn't be farther from the truth because full-time business owners, I'm talking to you now, right? And I've done this myself. You're so busy doing the things day to day. You're serving your customers. You're wearing a million hats. You're pulled in every which direction. Um, you have to make the choice that I'm going to invest some of my time 
in building my business and working on my business. Because I promise you, no customer is going to call you up and say, hey, take the week off and go ahead and do that thing, you, that project you've been talking about. <laughs> They're not going to do it. You have to choose to do that. So, you know, whether you have a job or you work full time in your business, trust me, both of both both individuals have to make the decision. I'm going to work on my business. OK, enough about that. I'll get off my soapbox. Next, accountability is the secret to your success. Seriously, I know that they're like, if you want follow marketers, they say it all the time, the secret to this, the secret to that. It's kind of annoying. I've even done it though. So I'm not going to lie. It, it, it's a, it's a, you know, people are attracted to secrets, but here, here's what I truly do believe. The secret to your sexy success in business is this. Um, and I'll give you an example. Have you ever drove past a building like in your city that's like half built? And you thought to yourself, what a waste. I mean. <laughs> they, they spent all this time, money, and energy building this building and they didn't finish it, right? Well, guess what? That's what entrepreneurs do all the time in their business. They don't take the time to plan. They drift from task to task. They chase shiny, shiny objects. That's a mouthful. And they start projects they never finish and they don't stay focused. So the secret to staying on track is to be accountable, having accountability in your life. If the goals that you have set for you and your business, if they matter to you, then you need to have someone that you respect, that you can be accountable to, that are going to help you stay focused and on track so that you're more likely to achieve your goals. And this leads me to my last point, and then I'll take a couple questions, is get help. Bottom line, you cannot do it all. <laughs> and this is, I say this all the time to clients, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Write that down. <laughs> like that, that's a quotable quote, by the way. <laughs> just because you can doesn't mean you should. So let me give you an example. Just because you can make graphics with Canva doesn't mean you should. Just because you can build your website on Wix doesn't mean you should. Just, be, just because you can do the bookkeeping in your business doesn't mean you should. And the list goes on and on, right? All the hats that you're wearing in your business. You have to ask yourself, just because I can doesn't mean I should. Who can I help to, who can I get help to help me with these things? Because see, see, here's the thing. If you fill your schedule with all the busy work, wearing all the different hats, you never have time to do the things that matter most. What are the things that matter most? Capturing leads, making sales, growing your business, putting together sales funnels, right? And even some of those components you can get help for. So, you, the thing is, is that you trying to do everything is what is killing your progress. All right, get off that soapbox. Next. And with that, I just want to take a couple of questions. Colin, did we get anything? There? Yeah, we do have one from um, Shannon. And um, if you, um, if you want to slow down your response too, I'll, I'll, I'll reply to it on, on Facebook as well. Okay. No worries. So what did she ask? Um, or he asked, uh, oh, hey, sorry. I, I may be overthinking it, but do you have recommendations that can be easy for the delight phase? Ah, delight. Yes. You know, just, it, it could be the simplest things. We could go on on a whole 30 minutes on this one, but you, you ever go through Starbucks and remember back in the old days, I don't know if they do it in your town anymore. I have a Starbucks this morning. My husband brought it, you know, remember when they say, what's your name? And they used to write your name on there with a little smiley face. That's delightful. That's something unexpected. It's them taking something just simple and, and just elevating the experience. That little thing can make all the difference in the world. Another thing, a business I used to do, I used to print stuff all the time. Remember back in the day when we used to print? And um, I, I bought these cartridges and you can only buy them in like certain stores and they were huge. And I would go and pick up my cartridge order from, from them. And inside the box, they always had like a little sucker with a little tag attached to it that had like a inspirational quote of the day. It was really cool. I thought, man, that's a nice little touch. I loved them because of that little thing. You know, when it comes to delighting and wowing, it, it could be the simplest of things. It could be a surprise bonus thing that you deliver. It could be, you know, a resource, a training, um, maybe a, 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 an extra bonus 30 minute call, or uh, maybe you could do a live Q and A. I mean, the possibilities are truly endless. Maybe you send them a shock and awe package where you give them a t-shirt and a mug. I, I do that in some of my programs where I'll send that package and it's 
it's just a nice little touch. It's not something I promote. It's not like on my sales page, this you'll also get these things. It's something that I just do because I want to, right? And, and I want them to know that they're special and they're important to me. So hopefully that gives you a little I, bit of idea. Yeah, Anything 100 else in? Um, Let me expand this again. Um, not that I, not that I see now. All right. Um, and I 100 agree. I think the, I think the, for me, I think, and, and you, and you brought up with the Starbucks one, I think that the, um, another good example, I guess, would be like Chick-fil-A, like with the people standing out in front, like the onboarding component of it is like, if your onboarding process is great, then I know the service is going to be great. Like that's delightful. That is very delightful. That's a great example because in our area, we have Chick-fil-A and, you know, the line is always circled around the building. It's a testament. Number one, they have good quality food. And number two, it's just, it is a delightful experience because even though the line is long, you know, you're going to get through it fast because they have people out there taking your orders ahead of time. How many times have you gone through like a fast food or a drive through and you're waiting there forever and you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, how much longer is it going to be? They, they eliminated that. And that, that is delightful. Good stuff. Is that it? That looks like it. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for um, joining us again today. Hopefully you take some notes um, and, and, and can get some clarity around your business as you start off the, this year. Uh, we're excited to have you as part of our community. If you're not a member and you want to, you want access to the recordings of these calls every week, you need to uh, join our Facebook group and all the recordings and replays are in there. So if you can't make it live, you can also get the recording once you're a member. Um, I just but, dropped it in the chat again. So if, fantastic. If wonderful. Not a member. Yeah, just, but just mark your calendar every single week, same day, same time. So it's 12 noon Eastern, depending on, so take it from there, from whatever time zone you're in. I'm in Arizona, Cullen's in Arizona, but um, yeah. So mark your calendars and we'll be showing up live 30 minutes of good content. All right, we'll see you guys again next week.